This is iPhone 13 Pro Review. Apple's iPhone 13 Pro is one of this year's best phones, even if it doesn't do enough to justify an upgrade from the 12 Pro. The iPhone 13 Pro release date was September 24, 2021. Prices start at $999, £949, $1,699 Australian dollars for 128 gigabytes of storage. If you're looking for a new, mid-sized iPhone, the 13 Pro or the 13 should be right for you. Apple says that its ceramic shield glass front and back make the phone four times less likely to break if dropped compared to an iPhone without it. When compared to the iPhone 13, the matte finish on the rear feels distinctly premium. During our time with the iPhone 13 Pro, we've found the design to feel good in the hand, it has a touch more weight than the iPhone 13, which makes it feel comfortable. The rear display on the iPhone 13 Pro protrudes a little bit from the body, which can be an issue for some, it's especially noticeable when you lay the phone down on a surface, so if you're typing, expect to go back and forth a little bit. Power button sits on the right-hand edge of the handset. Volume buttons, mute slider, and SIM tray are on the left. Speakers and a charging port are on the bottom edge. We've seen the Sierra Blue option before, but it's one of the best new colors from Apple recently. This is a good choice if you want a phone that stands out. The iPhone 13 Pro features the same 6.1-inch Super Retina XDR OLED display as the iPhone 13. For that, check out the iPhone 13 mini, but it has 460 pixels per inch, so the image is smooth and crisp. The biggest upgrade here is the 120Hz maximum refresh rate. That means the image on the screen refreshes 120 times a second for a more fluid experience than previous iPhones, it's most noticeable when you scroll through menus or use system apps. This is a dynamic refresh rate, so it changes according to what you're doing. For example, games will use a 120Hz refresh rate, while an ebook will use 1Hz. The idea here is to save battery when you're using apps that don't require a high refresh rate. With the iPhone 13 Pro, you get three 12MP shooters, the wide camera has an f1.5 aperture, the telephoto camera has an f1.8 aperture and can do 3x optical zoom, and the ultra-wide camera has an f1.8 aperture and a 120-degree field of view. Also included is a 3D LiDAR scanner, which measures depth. This improves autofocus accuracy, and lets you differentiate between your subject and their background. Aside from photography, the scanner also lets you use augmented reality apps. The main camera is excellent and while it may not look that much different from the iPhone 12 Pro's main camera on paper, it offers some important upgrades that make it one of the best smartphone cameras. Overall picture quality is good, with shots taken in good light showing plenty of color and detail in a great night mode for shooting in the dark. For video recording, the iPhone 13 Pro can shoot 4K at 24, 30 and 60 frames per second, while it can shoot full HD at 30, 60, 120 and 240 frames per second. Dolby Vision HDR will make the video look brilliant. Apple's cinematic mode lets you record video with a bokeh effect too, with the subject in focus and the background blurred, and it switches focus automatically between subjects. Apple's A15 Bionic chip powers the iPhone 13 Pro, which Apple claims is the best smartphone processor you can get right now. If you're in an area with coverage and your plan supports 5G, you'll be able to use the next-gen connection standard. The iPhone 13 Pro comes with iOS 15 out of the box. It's only a tiny upgrade over iOS 14, the 2020 update changed the look and feel of the iPhone platform, while iOS 15 only adds some tweaks and extra features. We'd expect that the iPhone 13 Pro will be supported with new software updates over the coming years, too, iOS 15 is compatible with iPhones going back as far as the iPhone 6s from 2015, so you can look forward to at least 5 years of updates. Apple's 13 Pro has a better battery life than its previous Pro handsets, but it's not as good as its top-of-the-line 13 Pro Max. We found that 15 minutes of charging got us to 25% battery, while 30 minutes got us to 53%. We expect it to charge from empty to full in just an hour, depending on the charger you use. That's not the fastest charging we've seen in a smartphone, not by a long shot, since some Android phones go up to 120 watts or even faster, but it'll be fine for most people.